welcome back to another one of my videos. As always, I find these stories that I read to you from different subreddits on the Reddit website. And I always leave a description. Sorry, a link in the description. <laughs> so that way, instead of watching gameplay through the video, you can read along if you would like to. That said, let's get into the video. The Watcher of Willowbrook Hollow. The main road out of my shit little hometown of Willowbrook Hollow is a literal dead end. That's not some metaphorical mumbo jumbo. It was during a particularly torrential spring when the road got washed away like sandcastles in a hurricane. But instead of fixing the damned thing, they just slapped up a grim dead end sign, like a middle finger to all who approached. A warning, they said. A sinister omen, if you ask me. Now, don't go thinking there's no escape from that godforsaken town. Oh, there is. But you gotta backtrack, retracing your steps like a damned fool. And the locals? Oh, they got a twisted kick out of it when hapless travelers get all turned around in their little plate piece of hell. You ain't going forward, stranger. It's a dead end. You better damn well turn around and head back. The gas station attendants would smirk, delivering the line like it's rehearsed. Hell, they've even made a buck out of that warning, selling it on some friggin' shirt. Of course, some folks, those poor clueless bastards, they don't quite catch the humor in it, and they sure as hell don't find it funny. Most of them listen to reason, albeit reluctantly. But then there are those foolish souls who think they know better, those who choose to defy the ominous signs. That's about the time they learned the stark and horrifying truth. The road wasn't just obliter obliterated by the rain. No, it's what lies beyond, shrouded in darkness like the devil's secret. A clearing guards in the boundary. Sorry, a clearing guards the boundary. A moat of sorts, but no castle to protect. Instead, it's the entrance to a twisted, dark forest, a domain where locals dare not tread. Folks talk of a ghastly entity they call the Watcher, an apparition that feeds on fear and despair like a glutton gorging on souls, a malevolent, shape-shifting creature that takes on different guises, luring uns unsuspecting victims deeper into the accursed woods. As the years passed, the stories evolved into more horrifying tales. Some say they've spotted a towering shadow with eyes ablaze, stalking silently like death on the prowl. Others whisper of a mournful woman, her tears, her tears a siren song, beckoning wanderers to their doom, only to fade into the abyss when approached. But the forest itself is a living, breathing enigma, a realm of twisted reality and deceptive illusions. The very trees move and dance, paths shift and change, and the air echoes with eerie sounds. It's like stepping into a maddening nightmare, where even the bravest souls lose themselves, wandering for hours, plagued by unholy whispers and maniacal laughter. And for the poor souls who scoff at the dead end sign and dare to drive through, they meet an even grimmer fate. Their vehicles break down like clockwork, stranding them in the heart of the darkness. Some claim to hear a faint voice calling their names, a seductive lure into the woods as their desperation grows. None who ventures too far in the Watcher's clutches ever returns to tell their tale. Some reckon they're trapped in a perpetual maze, tormented endlessly by the malevolent spirit. Others believe they merge with the Watcher, adding to its wicked might. The locals, well, they've got the good sense not to challenge the boundaries of that godforsaken dead end. They respect the domain of the Watcher and steer clear of the cursed road and the haunted woods that lie beyond. Those fresh-faced newcomers, or passers-by might scoff at the legend initially, but they soon realize the grim truth. The Watcher ain't no mere myth. So, the Dead End Road stands as a sinister monument to the town's darkest secrets, a warning to outsiders to heed the locals' wisdom, and a constant reminder of what's lurking just beyond the edge of town. If you ever find yourself near that dreaded Dead End, do yourself a favor. Turn your tail around. Because if the Watcher catches a whiff of you, 
you're as good as lost to the shadows. I saw the afterlife. It's not what you think. My name is Evan Richardson. I'm 25 and have a beautiful wife and three children. I've been a devout Christian my entire life. I won't bore you with my life story as most of it is irrelevant. But you should know I served in the Navy SEALs for eight years during the war on terror in Afghanistan after 9-11. I thought I'd seen hell. Constant deadly shootouts and insane pressure. Indescribable war crimes committed by my comrades. The unfathomable way the enemy sent children as suicide bom bombers and murdered civilians. It made me want to commit a few war crimes of my own. All of these things made me hate Afghanistan and war in general. But every time I left there, I saw myself going back for another tour of duty. Every six months I spent there, I got more and more used to eliminating the enemy, watching my comrades die, and shooting children suicide bombers. I became detached emotionally. I used to tell myself I wanted to leave, but I realized it was my humanity saying that. There was no room for humanity here. I began to enjoy my time in Afghanistan. The adrenaline, the action, the power. You could get away with whatever you wanted, and it felt good to get revenge on those who killed your buddies. I realized with my old comrades why my old comrades had done what they had done. Starting my fourth tour, I became invincible. I was a high-ranking soldier and led several operations eliminating high-value targets. Some looked at me with disgust when I executed a surrendering soldier, but most respected me. I had killed 15 people three months into my tour. I was invincible. That was until I took an RPG round to the stomach by some random terrorist as we were exfilling from an operation. At first I thought it was one of my buddies, but then my buddy, Michael, began screaming. I looked down and then the pain hit. The pain of a rocket passing through your entire body, searing everything. I fell out of the chopper and the last thing I heard was Michael yelling, We got a man down. Richardson's hit bad. Blackness. For what felt like hours, I saw nothing. I contemplated heaven and hoped to everything I got there. Then I saw a bright flash of... nothing. There was no bright flash. I woke up in a chair and across the table from a well-dressed entity with no hair. It wasn't human, but it wanted me to think it was. It said, Evan, I know you're confused, so let me explain. You are not in hell or heaven. Your soul is in the in-between. I tried to talk but realized I couldn't say a word or move from the chair. To put it simply, we created your species as a global project to preserve our own species. We, may, we face many problems as your species likes constant war. And we wanted to preserve our species if the worst came to worst. So we bioengineered our ancestors and put them on your already life-filled planet. They evolved into you, and you will evolve into us. Now we need something to do with your souls, and trust me, there's a lot of you. So, instead of you going to heaven or hell, we capture your soul and harvest it for energy. At this point, I was confused beyond comprehension, but I did have one thought which was, waste of this kid. So I tried to, but I couldn't move still. It then said goodbye now, and that was it. I couldn't say a word as my soul dissolved into energy. If you're on Earth, please find the alien's energy plants and bring us back. It's burned for years in here. My friends and I stayed at a haunted ski lodge. It was the middle of winter, the perfect time for a ski trip. My friends and I decided to venture into the snowy peaks of the Rocky Mountains. After an extensive search, we found a charming ski lodge nestled in the heart of the mountains. Little did we know, our dream vacation was about to transform into a chilling adventure. The ski lodge, named Whispering Pines, had an old world charm about it. Its wooden structure, blanketed with a thick layer of snow, stood out against the backdrop of the towering mountains. Upon our arrival, we were greeted by the lodge caretaker, a genial old man with a twinkle in his eyes. His warm welcome in the lodge's cozy ambience quickly made us forget the freezing cold outside. 
Our first day was filled with fun and laughter as we spent our time skiing and exploring the breathtaking surroundings. However, as night fell, we began to notice strange occurrences. Unexplained noises echoed through the lodge. The temperature dropped significantly, and we felt an eerie sense of being watched. One of my friends, Jane, was the first to see the apparition. She described it as a woman dressed in old-fashioned ski gear, her face obscured by a frosty mist. The sighting sent a wave of fear through our group, but we tried to dismiss it as a trick of the mind. The following days were filled with more sightings and strange happenings. Doors would creak open by themselves, ski equipment would mysteriously move around, and the chilling whispers of a woman could be heard in the dead of the night. Despite our initial skepticism, we had to accept the undeniable truth. We were not alone in the lodge. Determined to unravel the mystery, we decided to speak with the lodge caretaker. He revealed the tragic tale of a young woman named Emily, an avid skier who had stayed at the lodge decades ago. She had ventured out into a snowstorm and was never seen again. Her spirit, he believed, was still attached to the lodge, her love for skiing keeping her tethered to the place. The revelation was unsettling, but it also brought a strange sense of peace. Emily was not a malevolent spirit, she was just a fellow ski enthusiast, forever bound to the slope she loved. We decided to stay, respecting Emily's space and continuing to enjoy our ski vacation. The rest of our trip was a mix of thrilling ski adventures and eerie encounters. It was indeed a haunted ski lodge vacation, but not the terrifying experience one might expect. Instead, it was a unique journey that taught us about the enduring power of passion and the mysteries of the unseen world. We left Whispering Pines with unforgettable memories. A chilling tale to tell, and a newfound respect for the spirits that might be dwelling in unexpected places. In the end, our haunted ski lodge vacation turned out to be much more than just a getaway. It was an adventure that blurred the lines between the living and the dead, between fear and fascination. It was a trip that we would remember, not for the terror it induced, but for the unique experience it offered. If you liked that video, then like the video. If you're going to bed soon, sweet dreams. And if you have a full day ahead of you, I hope it goes well. Thank you for taking your time to spend on watching one of my videos on my channel, and I'll catch you in the next one. Ciao.